Good morning and welcome back. It is now June 28th and uh, we have a scorching hot week in the forecast. Temperatures 35, 36 degrees in the forecast and a lot of the canola is starting to look like this now. So this uh, dryland canola is pretty well stressed out by barrens here and it is really, really starting to bolt and it's just barely thick enough really that you can justify sweeping it. But I'm going to take a look and see what the insect forecast is looking like in here. Well, I'm not finding a whole lot of insects this morning sweeping the dry land. I had about, you know, maybe 15 ligus in here, maybe 10 or 12 cabbage seed pod weevils, so not the most, but it's also kind of hard to sweep because a lot of these dryland canola fields are very, very thin right now. And they are starting to flower pretty good, but we're already starting to see the effects of the heat here in the dry land. There is a lot of aborted flowers already. So unfortunately, a lot of these fields, it's not looking all that great at the moment here. Uh, definitely not going to be 60 bushel dryland yields in this area like it was last year. Well, this dryland durum is uh, still suffering along. It is now in head emergence, about halfway to knee height. Still managing to be somewhat healthy, if very, very stressed. A couple of them's just starting to flower. But I uh, imagine by the end of the week, conditions are going to look a lot different in some of these fields. Well, the lentils at least are flowering really well um, and starting to set pods. Some of the flowers from last week are setting nice little pods now, but I mean, as far as height goes, you can see we're not even out of last year's stubble yet. So that presents a problem when some of these pods are three to four inches off the ground. Well, sweeping this canola here, I'm finding quite a few blister beetles. That's these big black guys here. Uh, you don't want to handle them with your bare hands. If you can avoid it, they can uh, spit up an acid that can give you a blister, hence the name see quite a few on flowers here and there and these guys feed on flowers on canola as well as a few other plants if uh, concentrations get pretty high they can be worth spraying but in canola like this it's kind of hard to uh, justify an application right now irrigated crops at least are looking pretty good this barley is in head emergence and doing pretty well there's not a whole lot of disease there is a little bit here and there but not like I've seen in some previous years. A little bit of net blotch and some scald here and there. Overall, not too terribly much to be worried about. Well, the irrigated winter wheat is looking really good. We are pretty much finished flowering in here. And as far as disease goes, there's still a little bit of powdery mildew in here, here and there, but not nearly as bad as it was before we sprayed at uh, head emergence. So things in here looking pretty good for now. The dryland winter wheat, not so much. We are also finished flowering here, um, and I don't know how much hope we're gonna have this week of uh, getting into milk stage. Well, now grasshoppers are really starting to show up in this heavily drought-stressed wheat. You can see this pasture here is just burned right off with the heat and the drought, and so now these grasshoppers are really starting to move into the field here. So you can see feeding damage on a lot of these lower leaves, and really there's not enough here for the grasshoppers to eat so they're going to move pretty rapidly through the field right now they're very very small uh, they've all kind of run away on me here but most of them are only about a quarter of an inch in size so at that size they're still going to be fairly easy to control with something like matador silencer or desis but uh, once they get bigger they can get hard to control uh, your best option for control is usually corrigin it's going to give you a couple weeks residual feeding control as long as the plant matter stays green which might be asking for much in the next 10 days they'll feed on that and it'll get rid of them well the safflower is sure growing like crazy it is doing really well in the heat we're not too far away from seeing flower buds really starting to develop now you can just kind of see where they're going to be here and these leaves are starting to get pretty good and spiky get starting to get uncomfortable to walk in here in shorts well, here's a very highly biodiverse field of forages here. This is on irrigation. We've got a good amount of oats in here, as well as some of these forage-style brassicas. You see the stork's bill is now flowering. Lamb's quarters is flowering. And kosher is not too far behind. So, all in all, pretty biodiverse in here. Well, here's a great looking field of our new canola from Winfield United, the CP21T3P. Uh, just swept it for insects, and it is getting pretty full there is probably there was probably 15 to 20 ligus in there in 10 sweeps and you know we're probably at uh, 50 to 60 cabbage seed pod weevils so we're definitely at threshold for spraying and a good timing for fungicide too in the next couple days here 
Well, this canola that I looked at late last week is now flowering pretty well. It was just bolting last week. It was hardly even tall enough to sweep. So in this heat, even irrigated canola is progressing much faster than normal. Usually as a rule of thumb, it's, you know, three days for every 10% bloom or progress. Uh, this year it's more like a day and a half. It's literally half that time. So this field is now prime time for a fungicide. Um, trying to get that done in the morning before it gets too hot is going to prove to be challenging this week with these temperatures. I mean, by, you know, 9 o'clock, we're already over 25 degrees. So be careful out there, folks, and don't apply when it's too hot. Fungicides are expensive, and you don't want to waste them. Well, there's dryland barley by Lethbridge now. You can really see exactly where it was the snow pile sat during the winter. Wherever there was a little bit more snow cover, you can sure see the effect in the crop now. And where there wasn't, I mean, this barley is absolutely burning up. Well, it is so hot and dry here now by Lethbridge. We are 38 degrees here on Tuesday afternoon, and even the Russian thistle looks like it's stressed out. Well, the canola down here by McGrath is sure progressing quickly. Last week, this was just barely bolted enough to even sweep for bugs. And here I was thinking I was going to have a hard time going camping this weekend because I'd still be staging canola for fungicide. But this is now in basically prime time. This is, you know, basically 30% bloom. So it has already been sprayed and insects have been handled and everything is looking good. Well, here's a really nice field of irrigated soft white wheat by Lethbridge. It's doing very well. There's the odd grasshopper here and there, not really causing much damage yet. And they're still under threshold, but we'll have to keep an eye on them. There is also some cereal leaf beetle feeding going on in here, uh, here and there, but nothing worth taking care of. And we're at about, you know, 50, 60% head emergence in here now. So we're getting to that point where we're ready to do a fusarium head blight application with a product like Miravis Ace or there's other things as well. Well, this corn by Lethbridge is doing really good. We're mostly V6, V7 in here now. So we're pretty much at the end of herbicide timing. And there is the odd weed here and there, but nothing that's uh, a problem enough to really be worthwhile spraying. There's a couple little small canolas here and there, but uh, the crop is so rapidly outgrowing those, they're not gonna be an issue. And uh, I mean, it's not the 4th of July yet, but we're pretty much knee high on me, which is, you know, a good couple inches taller than the average person. So we're looking pretty good in here for now. Well, this dryland canola up by Carmen Gay is doing about as well as you can expect, given the weather. There is some pods getting set in here, but there is also a fair bit of abortion on some of these guys. So this one in particular, not showing very good pod set at all. You know, basically none. Right now, it's not too terribly stressed. It's still early enough in the morning that the leaves haven't gone totally limp yet, but you can still see some carryover stress from yesterday. Supposed to get to 36 again today. This is Thursday, so should look a lot worse later on this afternoon. Well, apparently the heat is doing strange things even to the wildlife. There's uh, currently, I don't know how well you can see them, there's three bull elk right here, not even a half mile outside of Nobleford, and it looks like they're uh, about to enjoy a swim in our suits treatment. Well, it's amazing how well some of this dryland barley is still hanging in there. A lot of the bottom leaves are completely burned right off. The heads are just starting to emerge from the boot. There is still a chance for these heads to fill, especially if we do get some of the thunderstorms that are being predicted for the weekend. So I'm going to try to go camping this weekend for at least one night. So if it's going to thunderstorm, it's going to be then. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe, and we'll see you next week.